You're live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. The blockade of Ukraine's ports is a Russian war crimes. In the next half hour, we'll be live in Brussels, Kyiv, Brittany and Ottawa. The EU's foreign policy chief has said the grain stuck in Ukraine is a Russian war crime and Moscow must be held accountable. Josip Borrell was speaking ahead of the European foreign minister's meeting about the crisis. It is thought around 20 million tonnes of grain are stuck in silos right across Ukraine. Overall, grain exports from the country are 40% lower than a year ago and that is contributing to a rise in global food prices. It's mainly due to Russia's blockading of Black Sea ports, with urgent efforts now underway to find new land routes via Eastern Europe. This is what Josip Borrow had to say just a few hours ago. And landslides. They were triggered by severe monsoon storms in both India and Bangladesh. Some four million people have been displaced, with emergency workers struggling to reach those affected. Forecasters are warning the flooding is expected to get worse over the next few days. Sri Lanka's government is holding talks with the International Monetary Fund, hoping for a bailout to ease the country's grave economic crisis. The country has defaulted on external debt for the first time in its history and has run out of foreign currency to pay for imports such as fuel. The crisis has sparked huge nationwide protests and strikes. The northeastern Chinese city of Jilin has started testing its entire population of nearly 4 million for COVID after the discovery of a single asymptomatic infection. Residents will be tested three times over the next three days. You're live with Lucy Hawkins. Still to come, the only remains of the murdered Congolese independence hero Patrice Lumumba, his gold tooth are returned in a ceremony in Brussels. And we report from Bogota, where the former mayor has just become Colombia's first left-wing president. We're live with Lucy Hawkins. Colombians have elected the country's first ever left-wing president, the former rebel fighter Gustavo Petro. Mr. Petro has said his victory marked the beginning of a new phase in their history, turning away from sectarianism and intolerance. Our South America correspondent Katie Watson is there for us. In response, several states have shut down the internet and suspended train and bus services. Don't forget you can reach me on Twitter. I'm at Lucy Hawkins BBC. We'll be back in a few minutes' time. See you then. Bye -bye.